Hi, my name is Hannah Owens. I am currently a postdoc at the Center for Macroecology, Evolution, and Climate at the University of Copenhagen. Today I will be presenting a talk entitled Model Transfer and its Relation to Theory. The talk will be in three parts. First, we'll start with the basics just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, I'll then spend some time talking about a key equation in model transfer and uh, then some important considerations uh, when you're thinking about model transfer. So first, the basics. The basic question when we do ecological niche modeling and model transfer is where can a species persist? In an ideal world, this question is fairly easy to answer. You might take a species of cactus, like this Mammillaria plumosa from Mexico, and transplant it to Namibia and see if it can grow and reproduce. However, this can be quite complicated. You may be dealing with a species that's extinct, like this Tylosaurus, or you may be dealing with a large species um, or a protected species that is very difficult to transplant, like this sperm whale. The good news is, if you have an ecological niche model of a species of interest, you can transplant or transfer that model instead. So remember that when you develop a niche model, niche models are based in environmental space. So this is a plot shown here of a niche model of a particular species, with the dots shown in black being suitable habitat for that species. Um, in this case, with mean temperature along the x-axis and annual precipitation along the y. Any map you make of that model in geographic space is a model transfer. So in this case you can see where there are suitable conditions in South America and North America. And a few up here in Northern South America. So simple enough, right? In other words, a niche model, as you already know, identifies potentially suitable environmental conditions. A model transfer identifies where in geography these suitable conditions exist. So, now that we have that under control, we'll now talk about a key equation for uh, the theory of ecological niche model transfer. So here's the equation. And um, I know that this, is, this may look complicated, especially if you're not familiar with um, set theory, but we use equations like this to simplify a set of what can be fairly complex ideas into a series of um, more simple, easy, easier to manage uh, logical statements that we can then clarify some of our thinking on model transfer. And I'll go through with all of the elements of this equation so that you understand what I'm talking about. And you too can then write these fancy looking equations. So, so what are the various parts of this equation? The first part is EP. In this case, E stands for the environment, so environmental conditions, and P is potentially suitable. So all EP means is the, the potentially suitable environmental space. So this is what your ecological niche model is identifying, right? This is EP. What about the other stuff? So GP, you might guess, G is geographic space, and P is potentially suitable. So you guessed it, GP is potentially suitable geographic space. But what about this ETA here? So in this case, ETA is the set of environmental conditions presented, represented by so eta gp is the set of environmental conditions represented by potentially suitable geographic space. So if we now think about this part, EP is equal to eta gp. That's the set of environmental conditions that are suitable for a particular species is the same as the set of environmental conditions represented in geography that are potentially suitable. So that shows this relationship. So EP and GP. So now we're talking about environmental conditions, but what about when we actually want to transfer the model into geographic space? Um, so what we do is we flip the equation. And so here, 
Here we're getting ready for a little bit of algebra. We have our etas here. So this is in the set of environmental conditions represented by this term. And the same for this term in the middle, which I will cover in a little bit. So we want to get rid of this term because we want to be talking about geographic space where we've projected our, or where we've transferred our model. So just like you do in algebra, you can divide out that eta and then um, you have inverse eta EP. And now we're talking about geographic space. So inverse eta EP is the area represented or the area that has environmental conditions that are potentially suitable. So here that is again. The area with potentially suitable environmental conditions. So the inverse of eta EP is the same as GP, the geographically the geographical area that is potentially suitable for a species. So what about that middle part? So O is the occupied area GI is any area that is potentially invadable to a species. So that's any area that is uh, accessible to the species, that has suitable environmental conditions and suitable biotic conditions as well. And this, U, this fancy U in the middle is the symbolic logical symbol for union. O is what's approximated when we train the model. So this GO is the data that is put into your modeling algorithm in order to get uh, EP. I is often what we want to know when transferring the model into G. So where can the species invade given GO? So we have our GO and GI and the union of those two is the area that's represented by all of either GO or GI and that's GP. And it's also the same as the inverse of eta EP. Okay? So now that we've gone through that equation, that helps us think a little bit more uh, simply and constructively uh, when we're talking about some important considerations when you do a model transfer. So we talked about this um, inverse of eta EP being equal to GP, right? This is in an ideal world. So in theory, the inverse of eta EP is equal to GP. But in reality, uh, GP is often not the same as EP, as the inverse of eta EP. And why is that? So why is uh, GP underrepresented? So this is basically the same as saying that model transfers can overpredict where there's suitable habitat. And this brings us back to the BAM diagram, which by now I'm sure you're all very familiar with. So the area where a species can persist is in the middle here where there are suitable biotic conditions, suitable abiotic conditions, and that the species can access successfully. So this area in the middle. What the inverse of eta EP is, is only referring to suitable abiotic conditions. So you can already tell that this area is going to be limited by biotic conditions and a species ability to access those conditions. Right, so GP is limited by B and M. And this is an important thing to remember when you're evaluating your model transfer, as you'll see throughout the, the, this section of the course. GP is limited by uh, biotically suitable habitat. So that may be uh, positive biotic interactions. So for example, a fungus that needs a particular species of plant. Um, it can also be a negative uh, interaction like competition. So we have this classical example of barnacles where uh, one species can persist from high tide to low tide and the other species can persist uh, only from about mid-tide to low-tide. Um, but you're not going to see the, the species with the much broader fundamental niche in areas where it's outcompeted by the species with the narrower fundamental niche. 
So it's this idea of realized niches again, if you remember back to previous talks in the course. Um, but it's important to remember that these interactions are often scale dependent. So generally when we're doing model transfers, uh, we refer to this as the Eltonian noise hypothesis. So this is the idea that a lot of these competitions are acting at very, very small scales. So in that example of the barnacles, that's only existing in a particular tide pool. If you zoomed out to the resolution of you know, one degree of latitude and longitude, say, you would say that conditions were suitable for both species. Even though at that very, very small scale of a tide pool, you have uh, very different situations for the two species. So often we're talking about things in terms of scales that are so big that those, comp that those biotic interactions tend not to make as much difference. And that's the Eltonian noise hypothesis. Of course, this is a hypothesis, and in some cases it's possible that these biotic uh, interactions are so intense that they actually do make a difference at the scale of um, you know, kilometers or degrees. Um, but that's an important thing to consider when you're doing your model transfers and interpreting the results of a model transfer. You also have to remember uh, movement limitations on GP. So can the species ac access all potentially suitable environments? So once you've projected your model or transferred your model into a particular geographic space, you still have to ask the question whether or not that species can get there. So say there's a river and you've projected your model to both sides of that river, can the species actually access those habitats? And it's entirely possible that there may be natural range shifts or artificial introductions, but uh, this is an important thing to consider when you're interpreting your model results. So remember that the inverse of eta EP uh, only equals GP in a best case scenario. We are assuming the Eltonian noise hypothesis is true and that all projected areas are accessible. So for more information, I'd highly recommend uh, chapter three in niches and geographic distributions in ecological niches and geographic distributions by Peterson et al, 2011. Uh, they go into a lot of detail on uh, some of the set theory that I talked about. Uh, another uh, useful article to read potentially is in defense of niche modeling by Dan Warren in 2012 in uh, in tree, uh, and there are many more uh, similar resources out there. And that's all I have. Thank you.